From my experience, when you purchase a 20 year or older Mercedes Benz, you're probably going to have to fix something on the car, usually within the first week of ownership. I don't care how well maintained it has been, it usually is the case. And so is the case with this S600 here. I was driving this the other morning and I realized that it wasn't heating up as fast as I would like. I've seen this happen on a lot of cars. You can even miss this on a pre-purchase inspection because if the car is warm, you're not going to pick this up. And that's probably a good reason why when you go to look at these cars is if at all possible, ask the owner to let the car not start up before you get there. Have it be cold so you can check this out it's taken at least you know 10 to 15 minutes to get this engine up to operating temperature well fortunately on the m120 engine it looks like the thermostat is very easy to replace it's located right here i'm just gonna have to pull these two covers off i got four bolts that hold the thermostat it's an integral unit with the housing and i just pulled the two hoses off i did pull that bottom belly pan and drain out about a gallon of coolant so that when I pull this housing off, it's not gonna spill coolant all over the front of the engine. But this looks like a very easy repair for those of you who think that M120 engines are hard to work on, at least for the thermostat right here. This is not difficult. You'll have to admit that was pretty easy. Notice I laid the bolts out here in order in case they were different lengths. You wanna always maintain orientation. Sometimes you get these weird bolts. It's a lot easier. You know, if I were going to be doing a long job here, I'd probably put a pan up here and set these out in a magnetic tray. But just for now, I'm just gonna put this back in. I pulled out the new thermostat. You know, this thermostat looks pretty good when you first pull it out, but I, upon closer inspection here, look at the difference. Look at how this particular bracket here is bent up, and this one is straight across. So I don't know if that's a problem, but somehow I feel that may be the reason. Now, anytime I install a thermostat that has one of these round O-rings, I always lubricate it with silicone dielectric grease. I love to use silicone dielectric grease when seating any rubber o-rings now you don't want a lot on here all you need is a fine film just like that just so that o-ring will slip in easily and no chance of it rolling up on you that's typical of any type of o-ring application uh, much better than trying to use oil now let's slip this down in here and see how easily it drops into place and it should just snap in with the silicone dielectric, it's just in like that. And then I'll get one bolt started. And typical of all these type of thermostat housings, you want to tighten all bolts down evenly and together so that you don't have side load on this housing. So I'm gonna tighten these back up. We'll put the hoses back on, drop the coolant back in, then I'm going to take this for a test drive. But there's one other thing I want to show you underneath the car. This is a perfect example why you want to do your own maintenance. I want you to take a close look at this transmission oil cooler hose. Notice the wetness. I saw this from the top of the engine, but when I remove this under belly pan right away, this is a sure sign that this hose is leaking transmission fluid. Now, I would assume, because it's rotating like this, see how loose that is? That's uh, the nut's loose. So let's check that out. You always want to use two wrenches when tightening these. On this one, you're going to need a 17 and a 19. All right. 
I tighten it as tight as I could get it, and look, it's still rotating like this. This is something that you're not going to want to neglect. The other end is rotating too, and so I'm going to get these on order. I'm going to replace both of them. These probably should have been replaced when the transmission was replaced a couple years ago. I'm not sure if I mentioned before, but this car has been dealer maintained for the last 17 years. You know, I'm really surprised that someone didn't catch the fluid leak in that transmission oil cooler hose. That could be a catastrophic situation. Now, this transmission was uh, replaced with a rebuilt a couple years ago. That's something that shouldn't have been missed. But I tell you, no one is going to pay as much attention to your car as you will. So learn to inspect and maintain your own vehicle. Now there's one other thing I want to show you before I put these covers back on. This is real important. You may recall that this is a 1995 model. Well, that was in the era of the bad wiring harnesses. And when I went to check this car out, I had emailed the seller and asked him about the wiring harness. Sure enough, he had receipts that the wiring harness has been changed. I probably would not have purchased this car if the wiring harness had not been changed. But you can check right away. If you've got any of these engines that you're looking at, from the early 90s up to 1995, 96. You wanna check this out carefully. You can usually just look right at the front of the engine and, and check the stiffness of the wiring. See, this wiring is very soft. If you have a bad harness, it'll be brittly hard. And you can always find some sort of plug, like right here, on some sensor at the front of the engine. All you have to do is pull back the wiring loom and look at the wires and see if you've got flaking insulation. And that'll be a sure sign that the wiring harness is gonna to need to be replaced. You cannot live with a wiring harness on any of these old Mercedes if the insulation is starting to fall off. You're gonna end up being stranded because the engine will quit on you when you least expect it. So I'm very happy. I've taken care of the first issue on this engine. Very easy job. And now I'm gonna complete my inspection when I'm able to pull this into the shop and get it up on the lift.